All right, we're going to show you how to run a Sobel mediator test in a multiple regression model. It's a real basic one. So there's one predictor, one dv, and one mediator. Okay, let's take a look at the data sheet. So here's the data sheet. First thing we're going to run is just a basic multiple regression. We're going to go to regression, linear. All right, our dv is our class final grade. And these are our IVs. One is a predictor and the other one is a mediator. We're going to go to statistics. We're going to check the descriptives, the parts and partials, collinearity, Durbin Watson. We're going to go to plots. Residual goes on the bottom. I'm sorry, predicted goes on the bottom, residual goes on the top. No giggling. Save, we go to Mahalanobis. That's going to tell us about outliers. No options. Click OK. All right, here is our output. So we're well, just going to switch over to the answer sheet. So please hold. Question one, the variable dv is the final grade in points. Question two, the predictor variable is their midterm grades in points. And what we're trying to prove is the mediator is the number of minutes with a tutor. God knows that our tutor, uh, to our tutors are just magnifico. So now we're going to check the assumptions for multiple regression. So you got to remember what they are. There's five of them. The first one is multivariate normality. That's when we use the Mahalanobis distance. We did not violate that assumption. Uh, our maximum Mahalanobis distance was 12.42. Let me pull up our calculated sheet. Hold on. And we had 250 sample size. We only had two predictor variables. So the maximum was 16.98, and we did not violate that. So we got no outliers, and a, the data is normal. Second assumption is the Durbin-Watson autocorrelation. It was between 1.5 and 2.5, so we did not violate that assumption of autocorrelation. We're on a roll here. Linearity, that's between each of the predictor variables and the DV. You'll notice that they're not zeros, right? The correlations are not zeros. So that means we do have a linear relationship between each of the predictor and the DV, right? The predictor and the mediator to the DV. So that has not been violated. Homoscedasticity, we did the scatter plot and we added the lowest line. And that's pretty darn straight. So we did not violate the assumption of homoscedasticity. And lastly, multicollinearity was not violated. You look at the tolerance scores and the VIF scores. So that was pretty neat and easy. So let us move on to the next question. So number five, was this a significant regression model? Yes, it was. That's when you go to your ANOVA box, and there's the data up there that says that, yes, this is a significant regression. We did good. The effect size, remember, that's your R squared. It wasn't great, but it's uh, big enough, 12.6%. And that answers five and six. Number seven, what is A? Okay, A is the unstandardized coefficient between the mediator and the predictor. We had to run a separate SPSS regression for that. I'm going to show you how that's done real quick, so hold on one second. Okay, so before we actually do the SPSS, I'm going to show you guys this picture just as a brief reminder so we're looking for A, and that's going to be the unstandardized coefficient between the IV, that's your predictor, and the mediator. So our predictor was the midterm scores. Our mediator was the tutoring minutes. So let's go back to SPSS and run that regression. So here we are back at the original data. We're going to go to Analyze, Regression, Linear. And this is important. The DV has to be the mediator. So our DV is the number of minutes. That goes there, and our IV here is the predictor, and that's the midterm grades. Okay, And we don't need to check any of the assumptions with this. All right, we don't need to hit any of these boxes. Again, we're just looking for the A value or the unstandardized coefficient. So we're going to click OK. It's okay. Is that OK? And here is the output from the regression strictly between the class midterm grades and the number of minutes. Okay, so that is a value right there. 
1.74. Okay, so remember, you're going to use this number in the Sobel test. Let's go down to the next one. So what is B? We have to do another regression. This time, it's going to be between the mediator and the DV. But we got to put the DV in the DV box and the mediator in the IV box. So hold on while we do that real quick. All right, back to the SPSS, analyze, regression, linear, get back in there, we're linear, okay. And our DV is the DV, and that's the class final grades. And our IV is going to be the moderator, which is the tutoring minutes. I'm sorry, the mediator, not moderator. They are related, but not the same thing. And we're going to click OK. And there's our B, right? In other words, that's our unstandardized coefficient between the moderator, I'm sorry, mediator, minutes of tutoring, and the DV. Okay, so, so far so good. All right, number nine, what is the SA? SA is the standard error of A, okay? So that is the relationship between the predictor and the mediator. You might want to look back at the picture, right, between the IV, which is the predictor, and the mediator. So we have A, which we already calculated, and this is the standard error of A. So let's get back to our thing. And we use the same uh, coefficients box that we used to find what A was. So there's the standard error of A right there. Okay. Again, you're going to use that number in the Sobel test. And scroll down to number 10. What is the S of B? S of B is the standard error of B. So again, that was between the DV and the mediator. I'm going to look at the picture again. So that's what this one is, right? The SB of between the mediator and the DV. So we're pretty much on fire. Again, we, we're going to use these numbers in the Sobel test. So now comes the money. Was the Sobel test statistic significant? So we're going to go over to that page. So give me a second here. All right, you have the link to this page. It's at the top of this of your guided homework. So let's fill in the blanks. A is 1.784, B is 0.079, and the standard error of A is 0.306, and the standard error of B is 0.014. Don't let the sizes of these standard errors fool you, okay? that This is a whole different test. So we're going to go ahead and calculate. Ta-da! And there's your results. There's your Sobel test test statistic right there. So it's 4.05, something, something, something. But look at the p-value. It is tiny, tiny, tiny. So that is definitely a significant Sobel test. And what does that mean? Let's scroll down. Again, yes, that was a significant test. And what does that mean? It means that the mediator of the tutoring minutes can significantly explain the final grades by the predictor midterms with the help of the mediator. In other words, if a student had high midterm grade scores, then we can predict the student's final grade scores as long as they have a high number on their tutoring minutes. Another example is if a student had a low number of tutoring minutes, then we cannot confidently predict whether the student's final grade scores can be based on their midterm scores or not. So that's what that means. That's what a mediator is in a multiple regression model. I hope that helped. MGZ and Copilot out. Finally. Say something. Oh, that's right. We're testing. <laughs> <laughs>